Nice throw. Nice throw. Yeah, I mean, I think in the NFL, like, that's the whole thing. Like, you have to have a franchise quarterback to compete, you know, all the time. If you don't have one of those guys, it's really hard, right? It's really hard. Well, there's one quarterback that makes so much sense for them for a ton of reasons. You understand what most teams in the NFL go through. They go through it year after year. And number six overall, you were very much in play to hit on a franchise type of guy. Uh, some franchises have gone through it for decades and they can't find that guy. Man, he's wowing us with the physical ability. What he's doing with the throws down the field, the accuracy. Wide open touchdown, DeAndre Carter! And the Chargers have taken the lead! It's not just success, it's the belief. Sometimes you don't get to play the game the way you want to play it. And you have to learn that as a quarterback. You have to find a way to win. There is no fear in this dojo. You've got to earn it. you got to go out there and prove to everybody that, hey, I'm a dude, and I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to make these plays in key moments. I do have to write it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the story on Justin Herbert? I mean, the story's still to be told. Um, uh, hard. You know, I mean, it's been hard from the beginning. And Herbert needs some help in getting up. Look out! Holding his rib cage, and uh oh. And he is really slow to He's get up, his holding his rib, his rib cage. It's insane how competitive and tough he's been this year. And you only have to go to the back-to-back -back plays in Kansas City. After he's hurt and injured and he stays in the game, which was crazy to begin with. Everett and incomplete, and now he is down again. Yeah, he's in a lot of pain. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know that he can continue to play in this football game. Then he's outside the pocket. He just knows he can't muster up anything. He just kind of throws it away. You can tell him that he's in such pain right there. He can barely get rid of it. Wow. Oh, yeah. And the next play, he went and threw one about 50 yards right on the money. Fires it. Caught! Inside the 10-yard line by DeAndre Carter. Like, who is this guy? Which planet is he from? An absolute dart on fourth down. That as tough as Justin Herbert is, it's going to be tough to keep him out of the lineup. Well, I think if there were any questions about his toughness, those are definitely gone now. Because I think we saw the mental toughness in his rookie year, right? two and seven start, and then the ability to win four games at the end of that season. He had, you know, game-winning drive against the Falcons. Herbert has to roll away from pressure to his right, throws to the end zone, caught, touchdown! This game-winning drive in overtime against the Raiders. So I think we saw the mental toughness there and how he's he was able to fight through adversity in that sense. And then I think we've seen the physical toughness too. You know, there was that play against the Chiefs when he trucked that linebacker on the, the sideline, you know? So I think we've seen it in small doses. But I think when you see it over a course of an entire season and everything he's had to deal with, I think it just raises your level of awareness of just how much of that he has. We'll start with a big injury from the Thursday night game. Justin Herbert fractured rib cartilage. Coming along probably as well as anybody possibly could have hoped he threw on Tuesday. You're expecting him not to be out there, and there he is at the beginning of practice with Easton Stick and Chase Daniel warming up. But you can only imagine like what he had to go through to get himself out there to practice every single day. I think it's that's really what I think about when I think about like that stretch. Like what like what moments are most impressive. It's just the ever present existence of Justin Herbert there on the field, fighting through whatever he had to fight through to be their first teammates. How would you want your teammates? As long as he, they say, you know, he wants to win, he's going to do everything he can for us. He's going to, he's going to stay after practice. He's going to throw. He's going to watch a bunch of film. He's the guy that I want playing quarterback. He's the guy I want to block for. I want to run routes for because that's the way I feel about my teammates. And, and if we all feel like that, I think we can accomplish a lot of things. I mean, it was something that I know the first week he had and we went through that whole process, it took a lot of time to understand, you know, what he was going to be capable of, how we're going to do that moving forward, but it affects every throw. So it's not it's not an ideal injury for a quarterback because every throw you're going to feel it. And it is so good to see that number 10, Justin Herbert. You hear the cheers in the background. They just unveiled it as the starter. I don't think either of us felt like that was going to be the case. 
can't believe you played. For him to bounce back after that, that quickly, after playing a game, most guys wouldn't have played then. And it's hard to finish your throw because it's on his left side, you know? To the end zone, caught, touchdown, Chargers! You can't do anything with that. That's just unbelievable by your quarterback and your pass catcher. And he's still making throws, which tells you his arm talent is through the roof. The season has been a never-ending run of doors, meaning open a door and what's behind it. Keenan Allen not on the field. He kind of hobbled off holding his hamstring. He went straight into the locker room. And something's different behind the next door. It's bad news for Rashawn Slater. Expected to be out for the remainder of the 2022 season because of a ruptured biceps tendon. It's been different wide receivers. Gold to his left and throws downfield. And that pass is caught left sideline. Bandy. I think there's a credit to him that he's been able to have the confidence and be able to play the play like we're talking about and not get distracted by the injuries. Because I think a lot of times it, it becomes that way. I don't have Mike Williams. I don't have Keenan Allen. I don't have Rashawn Slater. So it's been an uphill year, if you want to find one word to describe it. It always feels like Justin's had to fight uphill. 14-0, Browns. Here comes pressure, throws it to Eckler on the screen. He's got a block to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. And the Chargers have scored 17 unanswered. Get him! There's never been a stretch where you go, hey, it's Herbert, his guys, he's healthy. He can do everything he did the last couple of years. Let's go. And on the crosser has Mike Williams. Five into the end zone. Touchdown. Herbert on this fourth and 14 to Mike Williams short of the sticks. He got rolled up on with his leg. You know, it hasn't been easy. And um, I'm just doing everything I can to be the best quarterback, and best teammate that I can be. In some ways, you want to go, how the heck did this team get to 500? So now on a fourth and five with the rookie kicker, Chargers going to go for it. Eckler in the backfield, trips up top. Herbert on fourth down to pass. Caught. Four there? is DeAndre oh, Carter. There? They need it four, yeah. and he ends up getting seven. Found that void. Justin saw it immediately and made a quick, accurate throw. That was well done all the way around. And Herbert now with the NFL record for completions through his first three seasons, 1,063 of them with that grab, passing Andrew Luck. Going to DeAndre Carter, too. That's baller. Big time play. Got to have it. Nice job. Nice job. All right, now I want to talk. I want to start to transition to the end of this thing where we're talking about closing games out. All right, closing games out, finishing games in two minutes. What's going to happen is, all right, there's going to be a big situation that happens, right, where you have to be ready based on your preparation, your fundamentals, all right, and bring them to life when we got to have it. It's eight. Mahomes sitting up the screens of McKinnon. Tries to get through the traffic. He lost the football! What are we got to have it? Well, they're, they're do or die situations. Feels like this could be the game here. And it felt like in each of these games, there was like one drive where they needed to have it. Herbert stepping up, escaping and taking off. Herbert slides right at the first down line. And it's Justin Herbert, you know, making a play on third and 17 or whatever it was. And again, you got to believe this is four down territory. Shotgun snap. Herbert looking downfield, sideline shot here. It's caught by Allen. He worked inside of Williams to come up with a big catch at the 16 yard line. There has to be a feeling on that sideline that like in these moments where you have to have it, like there's a feeling that, yeah, he's going to get it. It doesn't matter what it is. Herbert looking, throwing, in zone, touchdown, Homer! You know, everyone likes to talk about the guys that are having a ton of su success, statistically that are winning games, but I feel like the true test of a franchise quarterback is what do you do when you're overcome with adversity? You know, the question is always, can your quarterback lift you above that, right? Whatever that is. Well, I just think that, you know, he has to do a lot of different stuff, right? Because a lot of times they're dropping everybody out, so he's got to check it down. 
Carter goes in motion, bottom to top. Herbert, here comes the blitz, throws it to Carter. He's got two Cardinals waiting for him, though. He's going to lose a yard on that play. That was Buda Baker coming on the pressure, forcing that ball to come out quickly. Other times they're pressuring him and they're in his face and he has to make a play. Here comes Allen, one goes over, and the pass is grabbed by Palmer. What a terrific snatch as he gets it. And in fact, in that particular game, I think one of the best plays that he made was the drive before it where he got sacked for a 12-yard loss. He was about to throw it to a shallow cross, and the defense flashed, and he ate the sack. And if he would have thrown that and they pick it off, it might have been a different ending to the game. And although that was the drive before, I believe, I mean, that was a huge play in the game. And so little things like that that you know, people don't necessarily see on ESPN and the you know the highlights and all that stuff are huge plays that that give us the opportunity to have the two point at the end. Chargers need an answer here. People always talk about players' reputations are made in those games at the end. Justin Herbert, nine fourth quarter comeback wins in his career. Be a great place to get double digits. Cardinals have been putting pressure the entire game, whether rushing four or more. Here goes Herbert, puts from the side, whacked as he threw, caught by the tight end, Everett. Those late game moments, all the focus is, is narrowed to one series, one play, you know, gotta have it, situations. He throws underneath and it's caught by Allen, chased by Hamilton, cuts inside the 15. How are they gonna perform when the game is there to be won? And what you saw was precision. Third and seven coming up. And I'll tell you, DJ, Herbert is under all kinds of pressure. It's every single snap. Every snap. Justin checks out of the play. Clap the snap. It's off to Eckler. Final look in the lead and a block and a dive to the one. He's got the first down on a gate of 10. Third and seven. Timeout taken. That was really the highlight of that series just because it showed Herbert's growth in that situation. I mean, if the quarterback doesn't execute, we don't have a chance. Because a lot of times what quarterbacks do in those situations is press, and then they make a mistake. He doesn't press, he takes what the defense gives him until we're to the last play. First and goal, gotta take a shot in the end zone here. Herbert, will have his choice, and Eckler, touchdown! He got it! Austin Eckler hits the right pile on for the score. Touchdown! 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 It looks like they're leaving the offense out there. They are. They are down one. They will go for two from the two. Win or lose. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, we're going to stand up. Yeah, stand up for this one. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Well, one thing Coach Staley has done is put a lot of faith in the offense. And we talk about it all the time that, hey, he has that much faith in us, we've got to respond. I think Justin really cherishes the fact that, hey, he believes in us, and we're going to go out and make plays for him, and we're going to win games. Gun, this is the game. Trying for two. Good. They've got the lead. It's the tight end, Jared Everett. It's a layup. Two-point conversion. 15 seconds on the clock. Fortune favors the ball. Chargers blew a fourth quarter lead. The last couple games today, they flipped the script. That was as close to a slam dunk, I think, as, as you, you're going to have in those late game situations. Smooth like chocolate milk. Smooth like chocolate milk, you know? And um, Gerald uh, gave us a lot of confidence uh, that he would run it exactly how he did. He's been doing that since the springtime. And it's one of those sweet, you know, finishers where you kind of call your shot and you're able to finish it. What a victory! I'm looking down in the end zone, DJ. Look at these Chuck fans going nuts, jumping around, losing their mind. But what a huge, huge comeback by Justin Herbert in this offense. Austin, after the game, said it best, is what you saw was growth. And that, that was a, a sign of a quarterback growing it into the position even more as a late game, you know, clutch performer. Hey, you got everybody? 
Everybody that's in this locker room knew we were going to make that. We knew we were going to go down and score. We knew we were going to get that two-point conversion because of who this guy is on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay? The season is just getting started. Just a moment. The way he battled, the way he made these plays in crucial moments when the team needed them, that says more about him as a franchise quarterback than, you know, the 65-yard bombs that he's thrown in previous seasons, I think. Are you buying them as a playoff team? Yes, I am. Andrew, a win is a win. I'm, I'm picking the charge because you need something special during playoff time. They have Justin Herbert. Chargers and Dolphins, Sunday Night Football, third time in the Chargers will appear. What is a now truly a must-win game. Set up for the Chargers to try to take that seventh spot and control their own destiny, Ilo. All they got to do is win a game against a very, very good Dolphins team here tonight. Yeah, we're, we're game out in the AFC. Got to search to play our best football down the stretch and find that formula. Be an offensive game, a Herbo special, and we know Justin Herbert, exceptional in prime time. The thing that I talk to Justin about in terms of comparison is himself. Um, I measure his game against himself because that's where I think the, the, the comparison should lie, in his own game. Off we go from Inglewood. Do stars like Justin treat primetime games any differently? I don't think he does. I mean, there, it's been that way, but I mean, he's played a lot of really great games on Sunday at one o'clock too, so it's it's hard to say. I think he just plays every game as hard as he possibly can and gives it everything he's got, and it's happened to come out that way that on primetime, he's had some really good opportunities to have some big time games. Justin Herbert, he just needs a little bit of time. It has been a real struggle over the last three games. There are a lot of weapons if he can get it off. Herbert. Throws out to the right. Adjustment made. What a catch. Oh, what a catch right sideline. Welcome back, Mike Williams. There's no way to defend this. He goes up, and then he goes around the backside here of Xavier Howard, and somehow hangs on to that football. Justin Herbert can read it out in the pocket and throw. Hey, he couldn't run for two months to protect that fractured rib cartilage, and he still put up good numbers, even with injuries all around him. But now that he's got the ability to get out of the pocket, make things happen, to me, that's where that arm becomes lethal. Late switch by Herbert. Out of the pocket, two receivers this side. Williams, feet down. Touchdown, Mike Williams. That was a beautiful throw that time by Justin Herbert. Herbert with a missile just over the top of coverage, and Mike, full extension and a two-toe tap finish. I think you're going to see some of it in this game too, that Miami has a way of bringing seven up the line of scrimmage and you go eeny, meeny, miny, mo and try and figure out which one's dropping out, which ones are rushing. Here we go, here's the all up pressure look, cover zero behind him. About third and four and he's out quick and Jerry Liver, the tight end, has the first down. Just his calmness under pressure, you've kind of alluded to that a couple times, I think is huge. And he doesn't, when there's a rush, he's not panicked at all. He's not looking at the rush. He just feels it, escapes, and then makes big plays. I mean, no matter what the situation is. Herbert shotgun snap. And he's got to climb the pocket, and now he's got Green in front of him. It's a shovel pass. Look at that, Herbert with a little Mahomesian magic to Keenan Allen all the way down to the 27 for a gain of 12 and another first down. This is one of the best games I've seen a quarterback play all year. It honestly is. What he's doing to maneuver around the pressure in the pocket and <laughs> make plays like that, it's, it's crazy. This has been an unbelievable performance. When he's out of the pocket and on the move, and can just fire it down the sideline and find a receiver, whether it's Mike Williams, or it's Keenan Allen, or it's Josh Palmer. Here Herbert, after the incompletion is third and 10, he gets out of the pocket, escapes, and fires sideline caught inside of the 10 by Joshua Palmer. To me, those are the plays that may not be the viral ones, like the laser he threw in Kansas City, or other great plays, but those are the ones that keep drives going. 
and that's what gives you a chance to have the highlight moment. Again, Herbert moves the pocket, goes for Williams, brought it in! Mike Williams, no touch. touch it! Back up and running, inside the 15, to the 14-yard line. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, that was a decent game. <laughs> this is special, here we go, this way, and then let's throw it all the way across the field. This is like a John Elway play. I remember John Elway used to do that stuff to us. Wow. Wow, I'm glad that guy's on my team. Herbert tonight, 371 yards, adding to his first two terrific seasons, and he goes past Andrew Luck for the most passing yards in the first three seasons for a quarterback in NFL history. He's got the mobility. He's got the demeanor for the position. That's everything you want in a quarterback. And I think Justin Herbert provides that. And that's why I love that we've been out here now three times to see him play this year because he's one of those guys that, oh, Justin Herbert's on TV? I'm gonna sit and stay because he may throw a ball that I haven't seen the likes of this year. Third and five for Herbert. He's got time and throws. What a throw! <laughs> Keenan Allen to catch. I have absolutely no idea how that got past Cove. Yes, sir, Keenan. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a shot. Oh my God! Woo! Woo -hoo! Oh my God! And immediately Keenan Allen turns around and points right back to his quarterback and said, How did you just do that? Yeah, back <laughs> at you. Justin Herbert is silencing all the folks who were talking about maybe he's not as good as he was the first two years. It's a it's a massive drive right here. Uh, this is a big drive. Yeah, it's a big drive. Yeah. Big drive. We gotta use clock and then and get points. You, you, so then you also need the ability to go take off and make a few plays with your legs. And how many championships and how many game winning plays have we seen where it's not the quarterback throwing the ball, it's the quarterback running the ball. Dolphins bring four. Herbert escapes. He's going to take off and get the first down to the ground. Slide inside the 20 yard line and move the chains inside the five minute mark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Justin did a good job of kind of not focusing in on the rush and feeling the rush and just going through his reads and progressions. And then when the pocket broke down, he tried to make a play or at least get back to the line of scrimmage. Take what the defense gives you so you don't make any mistakes. And he's been unbelievable with that. He has just maneuvered and manipulated inside this pocket. This is one of the great performances we've seen this year. I agree. Okay, 10. Yeah. He's the ultimate competitor. I mean, he's a guy that's going to give the team everything he's got to go win a game no matter what the situation is. Justin Herbert, though, was simply the difference in his football game. 39 of 51, 367 yards, no interceptions. Chargers win by six, 23-17. I think it's just more confirmation about the fact that this guy is going to be a star in the league for a as long as he wants to play, because he'll look back on, on 2022 and realize that it was a, a painful but a necessary step in his development as an NFL quarterback. Okay, the reason why all these things are happening is because he's got a locker room around him, not just players, coaches, staff, that are helping him be as good as he can be. But this is just the beginning, guys. He was big tonight, 39 and 51, all right, 336 plus yards. Oh, yes. right. Hey, the most passing yards through three seasons in the history of the NFL. Yeah. 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 I know people here know what they have. I know they do. I mean, I've, I've heard them speak religiously about it in, in many ways. It's gonna take nine, maybe 10 in the AFC. So you know where the target is. Now you gotta figure out a way to get there and you can't let too many games slip. So these are the biggest games of the year. There are two options. You either play meaningless football in late December and January, or you play games that have you on the edge of your seat and nervous. And that's what the Chargers are doing again this year. I think you can lead in a million different ways, you know? 
I think in order to be a good leader, though, you have to be very genuine. You have to be authentic. Leadership to me is two things. It's always lonely, but it's also unique. People lead in different ways. I think of the rah-rah guys who you see firing up the team before a game, like a Ray Lewis led in all ways, right? But not everyone has the DNA, the personality to do that. And with some people, it wouldn't be authentic. So when you see Justin Herbert playing through the kind of pain he played through in Kansas City, you know that that's a guy who leads his team by his example. And if you're telling me that that's the guy who's gonna lead my franchise for the next 10 years, I'll sign up for that for sure. Justin Herbert joining us now. Not that you're looking for any shortcuts, but like they say, it pays to be a winner. How nice was it to hear Brandon Staley say, you all didn't have to go in and lift yesterday as a reward for that win. Did you take that day off? Not completely. We, we went in as quarterback and lifted and watched the film, but uh, it wasn't a true day off for us, no. Did I figure? I knew it. I mean, you always hear this, that when you're the face of the franchise, you've got to lead from the front. Like, I wonder exactly what that feels like. What's it feel like to you to have all eyes on you all the time on and off the field, knowing that everybody is taking their cue from you. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here.